Hello. All right. Ready. So we're just going to start in one second here. Awesome. So, hi, my name is Catherine. Um, I am hosting this copyright for Canadian musicians today. Um, basically, I'm going to be talking about SOCAN and copyright and um, basically like what copyright kind of does for you and all that good stuff. Okay, so there's my list. So yeah, we're going to talk about what is copyright, what is SOCAN, um, copywriting your music here in Canada, and yeah, collecting royalties, which is, which is also great, gotta love that. A little bit of money. We all know that it's an expensive hobby or profession to be in as musicians. And where to learn more. So, first of all, who am I? Uh, I'm Miss Catherine, or just Catherine. Um, <laughs> I'm the owner and lead educator at Flourish Music and Creative Arts. Um, it is a studio and school. Um, I'm a multi-instrumentalist and composer. I'm also a dancer. Um, I've been a music educator since 2008, and my degree is in psychology, and I kind of connect that with, um, with music instruction, and also I've added um, some drums and piano and belly dance into my teaching repertoire over the years. Um, my interest in how human brains learn uh, and some therapeutic kind of stuff around that is how I'm able to juggle all of that stuff. So my main area of expertise is helping people bring alive, uh, helping bring people alive with creativity and emotional expression through music, dance, and art. Uh, my business's tagline is beautiful and fun from day one. So um, I try to, especially for beginners, try to make it beautiful and fun and not really focus so much on fundamental uh, like technique and stuff immediately but mostly just get people moving and get people you know active and and playful basically um, so uh, I specialize in getting people to be inspired and get through plateaus and to create their own works so this has culminated in the development of the Flourish Method, which I use in my music school. And just got to brag about this a little bit. I got my first book coming out soon, so that's pretty exciting for me. <laughs> um, more info on that kind of stuff. Uh, other workshops that I'm doing, lessons. Um, yeah, just basically all the stuff that I'm doing is at flourishmusic-aca.com. And so that brings me to why am I hosting a copyright uh, webinar, right? So it's not really my area of expertise. Um, but I'm doing this because I believe it's really valuable for my students. Um, I have, I, as I encourage my students to write and things like that, um, I should also be encouraging them to learn to copyright their material. Uh, Obviously, it's a big part of, I feel like it's a big part in stepping into that next, uh, that next um, kind of step to becoming professional musicians, which is kind of what, it's what I want for my students, um, to the degree that that's what they want as well. <laughs> um, so uh, lots of musicians are intimidated by copyright. They don't really... Uh, understand what it is or why it's useful to them and so a big part of why I'm doing this is just kind of explain that um, yeah to mostly my students and my friends who are musicians um, uh, yes and which brings me to my next point uh, creative people are missing out on revenue so as I was saying before Music is a very expensive hobby, um, especially as you become a little bit more proficient and more professional and you start to record and things like that. 
any amount of money that you can get back on that initial investment is going to be motivating and going to be helpful and it's going to make you want to stick with it for longer in my opinion. Um, and then again, what I was saying about the sense of professionalism or ownership of their own material, again, it's kind of like this next step in um, becoming a professional. So big disclaimer, I have no real idea what I'm talking about. I know the absolute bare essentials. Um, I've taken a couple of workshops about it, but I am a musician and music educator, not a lawyer. So please, um, if you have serious questions about this kind of stuff, like someone stealing your work or, um, you know, just anything that's more than the bare basics, contact someone, go through SoCan like I'll talk about, get, get some real help because what I'm telling you is just absolutely bare basics. Um, this info does go out of date quickly, uh, so they do change stuff. Like everything that I pulled from for this webinar today is pretty much straight from the SoCan website. Um, so it is as current as they are right now, but by the time you see this, um, it may be out of date. So again, if you have serious questions, make sure that you're, um, that you're looking up new information and doing your own research. Also, I'm not a representative of SOCAN. Um, there are other associations aside from SOCAN, which may be better for your needs. I don't really know anything about them. Like there's the um, Songwriters Association of Canada, I believe is one of them. I just don't really, I haven't really researched it that much because I've always worked with SOCAN. That's what was recommended to me at um, the workshops that I attended. So that's just always what I've stuck with. Um, also, if you are on a label, they might handle some of this stuff for you. Ask them, it's important. So let's talk a little bit about what copyright is. All right, so it's in the name. Copyright literally means the right to copy. So this includes the right to perform a work or a substantial part of it. So um, this is basically like, say you write a song, you are the one that is allowed to, to use that you're the one who is allowed to say, okay, I want a physical copy of that. You are the person who gets to um, print music and sell that. It's yours to copy. Um, this also applies to your performances, recordings, and communication signals. So a communication signal being like a radio broadcast or like what I'm doing right now is a webinar. I am basically like as I'm broadcasting it, I'm creating it, I own it. No one else can post this or use it without my permission basically. Um, copyright provides protection for literary, artistic, dramatic, or musical works. Um, this also includes computer programs and other subject matter known as performers, performances, sound recordings, and communication signals. So a little bit of uh, repetition there. So we'll do a little bit more repetition here as well. <laughs> uh, if you're a music student, you know how important repetition is. All right. So it's not just music that be, can be copyrighted. It's not just your performances, but it also includes all literary works such as books, pamphlets, computer programs, text, anything that you write, it's yours. Um, dramatic works, works such as motion picture films, plays, screenplays, and scripts, musical works such as compositions with or without words, artistic works such as paintings, drawings, maps, photographs, sculptures, and plans. Okay, so anything that you create is yours and you can decide who's allowed to copy it and what kind of copies you want to make for it yourself. Um, so let's see. So yeah, we kind of went over some of this stuff. Yeah, even a re re reciting or reading of a literary work. So if you're doing an audiobook, that is also yours. Um, you can look more into this, but basically that's 
anything that you create is yours. Um, so I think I might have skipped a little part. So basically, like, uh, yeah, I think I might have put one of these out of out of place. So basically, like, copyright in Canada is created the moment that you create something. Like, the moment that you, you know, have a recording or you've written out the tab for a song, the moment that you, um, that you, you know, paint a painting, it is yours. Like, as soon as it is a thing, it's your thing and no one is allowed to steal it from you. They're not supposed to be. So, according, so in Canada, the Copyright Act states that a certificate of registration of copyright is evidence that copyright exists and that the person registered is the owner of the copyright. So, you don't need to, uh, register it for the copyright to be, um, you, you don't need to register it, just the fact that it exists creates the copyright. Um, however, the evidence for that can be a little bit tricky. So if someone's contesting, like, no, I wrote this song first, if you registered it first, that helps prove that you wrote it first and you didn't steal it. It's them stealing your work or it's just a coincidence that they're similar. Um, however, the Copyright Office, so if you do, like, go to the copyright, like, through, uh, it's called CIPO in Canada, uh, I've never really done that. I just register my work through SOCAN, and uh, it's been fine for me so far. Um, however, like just having the copyright, uh, the Copyright Office of Canada is not responsible for policing or checking on registered works and how people can use them. So they're not going to be checking around if someone is using your work illegally. So if you were going to do that all by yourself, you would have to go on every, you know, radio, every YouTube channel. You would have to go through all that stuff yourself to see if anyone is stealing your work. That's just not really feasible. They're not going to do that for you either. Um, they can also not guarantee the legitimacy of ownership or the originality of a work will ever be questioned. They're not going to protect your rights necessarily. Organizations, organizations such as SOCAN manage and protect these rights on behalf of creators and kind of on behalf of the Copyright Office because the Copyright Office doesn't handle that kind of like day-to-day -day management of your rights. So, what is rights management? So, those who own their rights, so... You know, if you haven't sold the rights to your music or your art or whatever we're talking about here, um, those people have, so like, again, let's just say that you wrote a song, you've tabbed it out, and you've recorded it. Those that own their rights have the sole right to decide who gets to use their music and where. Every time your pieces are publicly performed, you can get some sort of compensation, even if that's you performing it. And so can collects this compensation for you in the form of licensing fees, which it then pays out to you in the form of royalties. So let's just take a little bit closer of a look here. So... Yeah, I just copied this from their website. Again, I am not a professional. This is more just a favor for my students. Um, so let's go in here. Yeah, so I won't get too much into this stuff. Basically, they're actively trying to protect your stuff. They actively check around for who's using your stuff and collect royalties if, say, radio stations are playing it or someone's doing a cover of it and things like that. So what is a royalty? So SOCAN collects licensing fees from music users, so such as radio stations, such as YouTube, such as Spotify, such as uh, bars, anywhere that public publicly performs music, also TV, film, um, they don't contact you to ask you if you need to, if they can use your music. If you register with SoCan, they will license like a bulk kind of like licensing thing from SoCan, 
then SOCAN will keep track of what they're using and they will pay you accordingly. So we don't really need to know the timeline. Generally, they pay out royalties four times a year. Um, this It takes a while for them to collect their their performance fees, especially for international performances. So even though you're Canadian, um, they're protecting your rights in Canada. They're also monitoring what's what's being played and performed in other countries as well. So you're paid when royalties uh, you're paid royalties when your music is performed online, um, music streaming, YouTube, radio, webcasting, video games, all that kind of stuff. So a little bit more about what exactly SOCAN is. Uh, SOCAN, it's, it doesn't really match up because it's French, but in English it stands for Society of Composers, Authors, and Music Publishers of Canada. Um, they're Canada's largest rights management organization, and rights management is all that stuff I was just talking about, where they're kind of advocating for you, they're collecting licensing fees on your behalf, they're monitoring copyright infringement and stuff like that a little bit better than you could or the government of Canada's copyright office would bother itself with. Um, so, yes, so yeah, they do this by fighting for uh, musicians and art creators' rights and ensuring they're compensated when their material is used. Uh, they license the performance and reproduction of musical works and distribute royalties in Canada and worldwide. Okay, so I'm just going to take a brief little look at the chat here and see if anyone has asked me any questions so far. No questions so far. This is also my first time streaming to Facebook, so uh, my apologies if there's some sort of issues here. I'm doing my best. Okay, so back to it. Who SOCAN works with? So they work with songwriters, composers, producers, music publishers. So that would be people like... Um, so like a music publisher would be uh, like a label, I'm pretty sure. I have to double check me on that. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, people who are just kind of like coming out, the new talent. So that can be included in some of these other uh, things as well. So a couple of questions about registering work with SOCAN. Again, sorry, I just copied this. So hopefully you can see that okay. All right. Oh, there we go. Might be a little bit better. Okay, so how do I know when to register a song? So you would register a song, uh, your song title with SOCAN, when your song is being performed or is about to be performed in public by yourself or someone else. So if you're going to live stream a song, you would want to register it before. If you would like to um, play it live at a gig, you would register it before. If you're releasing a demo, you would regis you'd register it before. Um, you don't necessarily, there's, I've seen a couple different things where it says like, oh, does it need to be recorded? Um, some things I've read, it says that it needs to be a physical copy, so you'd need to like record it and put it onto a CD or something like that. That might be a little bit outdated. Again, I am not a lawyer or copyright professional at all, but from what I understand is that once it's written, even if you write it down on a piece of paper, right, I guess like with the digital stuff, like if you write it down, it's yours, right? And the odds of someone stealing something before you've released it online somewhere or in a hard copy are pretty low. But again, like you want to, you just want to kind of get ahead of this. And then it, it doesn't matter really if someone's going to sue you for it or steal it or whatever. At least you can get royalties when it's performed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how do I register my musical works as SOCAN? So it's very, very easy. I'll go over that a little bit in just a minute. Um, yes, so yeah, 
Uh, you can easily complete an online work registration for each work that is being or may be performed in public, on radio, or live. Uh, what happens if you are a member of SOCAN and a co-writer like a bandmate isn't? So you can register the song. Uh, again, I'll show you in a little in a minute here kind of what that looks like. Aw, thanks, thanks for the likes, you guys. Um, so, yeah, basically you can write the stuff out. You can just say who wrote what. And it uh, they won't collect any royalties, but at least their name will be on it. They can join the society at any point, and it's just kind of up to them. At least it's registered and everyone knows who owns it and stuff like that. Um, so this is kind of like how do how do co my co-writers co and I split songwriting shares? So traditionally, uh, there's some really great stories in music history about this. Um, basically, like if you write the main part of the track, generally you're considered the writer. And if you write the lyrics, you're considered a writer. But if you say add a solo on top of it, you're not considered a writer. If you play the drums or the bass, you wouldn't necessarily be considered a writer. Now, that's not really how I do it. When I'm in a band with someone and they're contributing, they're writing their own bass lines or they're writing drums or they're you know, they're contributing to that fundamental process and I need them, I will give them songwriting credit, at, you know, depending on how much they're working. It's just something that's like, it's a nice thing to do for someone. Also, if, you know, if you're working with them, it shows them that you're valuing their work. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, crazy stories like, um, Zappa has a pretty crazy story because he would like own everything, even though it's, you know, he might have five or six or more musicians um, improvising because it's his project and he's paying them to be there. He would just say he owns it, even though he it's it's a, it's a organic thing that's being created as an improvised session between a bunch of different people. So, you know, there is there's some ethics and stuff that come into that as well. And that can cause a lot of drama later especially if it becomes more popular or if your bandmates are feeling like they're being left out and they're not their work isn't being appreciated and stuff like that so I like to get ahead of that and just tell my people I appreciate what you're doing I'm gonna put it in writing you know you did 25% of this or you did 50% of this I couldn't have done it without you um so in most cases, band members who have not written the song but contributed to the arrangement, so that would be like what I was talking about, like a bass player or something, would not receive writer shares but would be included in royalties based on sales of recordings. Again, you're kind of playing chicken. If, it, if something blows up and you said like, oh, this person did 50% of the work when they really didn't, um, you could be giving away a lot of your rights or a lot of the yeah like a lot of your that's not necessarily rights but a lot of your revenue and stuff that you could create from that but anyways I, again talk to a lawyer if you're confused <laughs> i am not one um okay so how do i register a cover song you will not register a cover song uh it is in copyright so you do not do that there um, you can create, you can still claim a share of a work, um, for producing it or changing it or adapting it, but that's a little bit more complicated. You can cover whatever song you want, but if it becomes basically like the, you don't get a writer's credit, you can get a performance credit. Um, again, please ask someone else a little bit more about the details on this, but you cannot, like, you will not own it. You, you can perform it and do your own rendition, but uh, basically whatever organization the original artist is, is uh, belonging to will collect some royalty when you perform that live or when you share that. Okay, so other so can member benefits so uh some of it is like really whatever it's not super super great you get some like banking insurance discounts uh some gear and software 
some travel stuff. There are is actually free accommodations in Nashville and Los Angeles uh, for SOCAM members that are visiting these cities to further their career craft or craft. That's probably my favorite kind of thing. I haven't made use of it yet, but I do really like that that's uh, an option there. And again, this also changes, so you'll have to check in um, at SOCAN.ca. Uh, there's a different website that is also SOCAN, but you can't find this from the main SOCAN.ca website. Um, this is their grants. We have to search up SOCAN Foundation. Um, so it's a little bit hidden, but if you're a member of SOCAN, there's all these different um, grants that you can apply for. And there's other projects on there. There's awards, programs, all that kind of stuff. Just check on that website to see. Okay, so becoming a member is very easy. I'm just going to drink some water here. So, again, you will receive royalties when your music is performed on radio, on TV, in concert, in film, in bars, digitally, internationally, all that good stuff like I was just talking about. Um, to become a SOCAM member, music creators must meet the following criteria. You must be a music composer, songwriter, or lyricist. So that sounds really quite impressive, but basically anyone who's written a song, even if it's two chords and you're humming along to it, if you record it and you share it, that is yours. You are a composer. Congratulations. <laughs> it's not it's not as crazy as it sounds. Um, so, uh, so you can, you have created a musical work or part of a musical work that has been published by a music publisher. That can be yourself. You can keep your publishing um, or you can allow a label to publish. I'm still a little bit cloudy on the publishing aspect of it. I always just keep my publishing rights. Um, but again, that's that you got to do a little bit more research on that if you're concerned about that. Um, if it's recorded or if it has it is performed or will be performed in a public forum such as radio, television, film, live performance, etc. Even if it's a ringtone uh, that is subject to licensing by SOCAN. So again, if you go deedly, 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 and you sing along to it with your own lyrics and you put that on Facebook or YouTube, you are musical talent, you are a composer and a songwriter, and you can apply. So if you click that little apply online thing, it'll take you to this page. Um, you can fill that out. Let's, oh, let's see. There we go. It's a little bit better. Uh, just ask for some basic stuff. Um, once you fill that out, it will um, send you, it will send you like a whatever, like a verification email. And so you'll fill out a little bit more just information about yourself. You can add banking information or whatever so that they know where to deposit. Oh, I did notice I do have a comment here. I don't know how to even look at it because I am a noob. Uh, oh, great info. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, it took me eight minutes to see that. That's <laughs> that's how good I am at, at live streaming on Facebook so far. <laughs> okay, so once once you uh, get all that kind of stuff filled out, um, I was gonna do I was gonna fill out like a new one that I had to do live for you guys, but I figure I should keep some of my information private. <laughs> So yeah, if I was just with my a student or two, I would I would show them, but maybe I shouldn't share this publicly. Um, so yeah, get a little bit of that stuff off there. So whatever, that's my full name. You don't need to know all my stuff. It basically you'll get to this page here where you can register your works. So I don't know how well you can see that. It's pretty pretty teeny. Let's make that a little bit bigger for you. So work number one. So you can put the title of your track. You can put AKA, so say like sometimes it's shortened or if there's an alternate name, that makes it a little bit easier for, um, 
for them to collect the, the licensing and figure out who's using it and where. So I had one time with one of my old projects, Cat the Adversary, um, a bunch of, I did like a special for a radio station and they had misspelled a couple of my song titles. So when I went back in, so, so Can did not register that those were played publicly. So I just went back in here. You can alter this after it's done. And I just put what they had put in the AKA section. So it's like, oh, they misspelled iridescence. So I put their misspelling of it in there. Um, performers, you put whoever's performing it. So if that's you, if that's you and a bass player, if that's you and whoever else is performing it, you put that info there and you can add extra people there as well. Um, and then let's go to this next page here. So you can add as many works at a time as you want. This is kind of handy for if you're uploading like a whole, um, if you're uploading like a whole album. So that's kind of what I was planning on doing starting for you guys. But again, I can just go like this and that's not too bad. Um, so at the bottom here, I can put composer and author, that's me. So like an author is whoever's writing the lyrics um, composer who is whoever is writing the music. So what I was going to put um, is I actually wrote a book. I guess I showed you a little bit at the beginning. I'll show you again at the end because I'm so excited. So I wrote all this original music for this book. Um, so I put myself as author and composer. Um, even if there's no lyrics yet, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, my affiliation is SoCan, so if you're working with another musician who is, say, they're from the U.S., or they're from another country, or they're working with, like, the Society of, or, like, the Songwriter Society of Canada, or whatever those, like, kind of different ones are, you can put their affiliation in there as well. So, collection or share, because I wrote all the stuff, I'd put it as 100% mine. Um, I'm not really, I can't really remember what all these numbers and stuff are. Um, and then the U.S. representative is ASCAP. That's automatically ASCAP. Um, that's because they have a partnership with SOCAN. Um, I think that there is, you can choose when you sign up for SOCAN what uh, U.S. partner you want to go with. But I, I did this a long time ago. I've had this account for a long time. I really don't remember. Um, again, kind of research that as you're, as you're going. Um, so work type, uh, yeah, I'd have to look up what, what all these are, but it's like the genre. It's like basically like, is it classical? Is it contemporary? Blah, blah, blah. Um, does this work include copyright protected content other than your own, such as sampling or translation? So this is a big kind of area of contention right now with um, electronic artists who are, you know, taking, tweaking, you know, sometimes they manipulate uh, samples so much that they're almost uh, unrecognizable as what they were originally. So at that point, um, are you really stealing someone else's work? There's a lot of kind of confusion around that right now. I don't really do that kind of stuff, so I don't really know too much about it, but I always just put no, uh, cause I don't do, I don't deal with any of that. So if you're working with, um, genres that are a little bit more convoluted, again, please do your own research. This is just meant to be bare bones kind of stuff. Um, aw, thank you, uh, Audrey, <laughs> Audrey, <laughs> okay, so just have a couple little uh, tidbits here, um, common kind of questions. So in Canada, copyright lasts for 50 years or until the last surviving author dies. There are exceptions, blah, 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 blah. Again, like that can get pretty crazy legally, but that doesn't really concern us too much right now. Basically, like if you register your work, it's gonna be registered for the rest of your life. Um, registering band names. So this is like a separate kind of deal. Um, I was talking a little bit about the Canadian Intellectual Property Office. So that's who technically you would register copyrights with. Um, again, your copyright exists um, upon creation. So unless you're doing something that you're like really worried someone's going to uh, 
someone's going to steal from you or someone's going to like potentially sue you uh you know who knows like band drama is crazy <laughs> uh people are crazy when it comes to some of that kind of stuff if like a band is breaking up or there's like some rivalries or something like that then you know think about it talk to someone who has the expertise right um but yeah registering bandmates is a whole other kind of thing um, my band broke up. Can I get back the sh song shares that I gave my band members? So like I was talking about, I always am like very generous with my song shares, like with my percentage that I give people. Um, when a work is registered and shares are assigned to the co-writers, those shares do not change regardless of whether or not the writer in question continues as a member of the band. In order to have shares revert to you, you'll need signatures of all the band members who have been assigned a writer's share. You'll need to contact your co-writers and request that they sign a revised work registration form or have them sign a letter and send it to SOCAN stating that they're in agreement to this change. So again, this doesn't really matter that much unless um, unless like you're supposed to be collecting a lot of royalties for this, like a song, like all of a sudden you have a hit or you're touring it a lot and, um, and it becomes like really important for you to, to revert the ownership back to yourself. However, just be kind of conscientious that it is a big hassle to try to go back on it once you've already given it. Um, and, and just be conscientious if you're the songwriter who you give those rights to immediately. Um, if you have more questions, and I'm just, you you better if you're if you're really concerned about this stuff because again this is a very very light overview. Um, there is the creator's toolbox on SoCan that has all of these PDFs that kind of go through stuff a lot more deeply than I did today. Um, yeah, like they have a whole sep sa section on sampling there, share splitting, like I was just talking about with uh, other band members and collaborators, um, how much you get for your royalties, which is a fairly small amount um, per play. It also depends on what kinds of plays you're getting. You'll need to look up those things because, again, they do change and they're f actively fighting for your rights. So. They're, they used to pay a lot less for YouTube, but so can and other um, like artists represent, re representing um, rights, manager, rights managing kind of organizations fought for higher rates of royalties. Um, so again, just if you, if you register it, they'll do their best for you because you can't collect royalties yourself. You can't be policing the world for whether or not your work is being shared without your permission yourself, you need someone to do that for you. Um, I don't see any questions. I know that there's not too many people viewing right now. I shared this specifically for a couple of my students and they both couldn't make it live. So um, like I will be sharing this to YouTube. You can always ask me questions. Um, on the YouTube post when I put it up there or on my uh, Facebook page. So again, just just got to plug it. This is my book and it's coming out soon. Um, it's called The Flourish Method for Beginner Guitar, uh, for guitar, sorry, book one, which is an enchanting guide to beginner guitar. Um, and so I'll be doing more workshops. I'll probably do like one webinar a month or something like that. Um, I do do private lessons. I do consultations um, because of my psychology background and personal experience with some extreme performance anxiety. I can um, give some, some help with those kind of issues as well. And lots of that stuff is going to be up at flourishmusic-aca.com. Uh, it's a very new website, but if you add yourself to the mailing list, I will have so much stuff up in the next couple of months. Um, Adri says that he's writing a concert theater play. Oh, that's that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and like you, if you're writing a big work like that, you you want to protect it because you know I don't know how many minutes you're planning on that being, but when I imagine that in my mind, I imagine that it will be, um, quite quite long. Um, if I play simple covers at a town fair just for kicks, will I be sued if the original owners wanted to? No, you won't. You're allowed to play other people's music. Um, it is where you're performing. It's their responsibility to be paying licensing fees. So if you're performing at a bar or a fair or on a radio station, they need to pay licensing fees every year. Uh, CTP is for a stage at the local theater. So your local theater should be paying a licensing fee because they host public performances. So radio station, YouTube, everywhere that there sh that music is being shared, they pay licensing fees unless they're doing it illegally. So some bars, um, so for example, like even a karaoke bar, they pay a licensing fee. They're only allowed to play certain songs depending on like the company that's hosting the karaoke. Yeah, so it's not your responsibility as a musician to be paying those licensing fees. Uh, you just can't claim that it's yours. So like you can, if you record your own rendition, for example, you can go onto that like, onto this page here. You can list yourself as like a performer but you do not, you do not get to call yourself the composer. You do not get so it's like you only get like half of the royalty, as as far as I understand it. Um, so it's and and that's only if you, yeah. So like you can basically get like a a royalty for your performance for doing it in your style. You're still adding to culture, and. Yeah, and as long as you give credit for the covers and you include the name of the original person and the original song, that really helps license like uh, the the rights managing companies find that you're doing this. And it actually does those people a solid because you are giving them fifty percent of that. Um, uh, I <laughs> so so basically like yeah if you do a cover you're actually doing them a solid because they will get royalties for you doing a cover because you're performing their work. Um, can I claim the tunes ironically for a laugh? Um, I would not do that personally because I don't want to mess around and get sued. I have no idea what the probabilities of that occurring are. I would just like not want to <laughs> mess around with any of that. But you know, you do you if, if that's if that would bring some excitement into your life. <laughs> By all means, and then get back to me. Let me know how it goes because I'd be fascinated to to uh, hear how um how that would go for you <laughs> uh, yeah so i give credit to the original artist but it might be recorded on a video and shared online yeah that's fine and as long as it says this is the name of the song this was the original person it'll make it really easy for their um organization or their label or whatever um like the label so like labels will sometimes register it for you that's a whole other thing because I work with smaller labels. I still do all of my rights management stuff. Um, again, like your mileage may vary. Um, but as, as long as you put the name and you say like, oh, this is a cover, this is that, it makes it very easy for SoCan or ASCAP or any of these other organizations to notice that, oh, that was a performance. And so we'll give We'll give you a performance credit and we'll give the copyright person a, a royalty credit for their work being performed and contributing to the, the lusciousness of society, basically. Um, uh, yeah, so as an indie musician and performer, I really needed this info. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. And I see like there's just so many... So many people around me, I have a lot of friends who are musicians, like smaller musicians, and they just like, again, I wouldn't have known any of, about any of this stuff if I wouldn't have done, um, uh, if I wouldn't have done like camps and stuff like that where they did workshops on this, so. 
are there provincial departments of SOCAN? No, it is a national organization. Uh, they have two different offices. I accidentally like sent some of my performance stuff to the um, to the Vancouver office, but then they like took forever to like send it back. So whenever you send stuff, make sure you look on their website for where you're supposed to like send stuff. Um, but it's just one national organization, and I'm most of the stuff you can do online now when I first started using it like you'd have to like mail in like oh I did a performance and it's like they want you to like mail a ticket stub so that they know all the information about where you're performing and stuff like that so it's like you have to like so you do some of that stuff actively so you know you, you got to try to help them out in a way like as far as monitoring um, like the digital sphere, they do that themselves. But if you're performing, you're going on tour, you can, you can make sure you're getting paid for your performances by, uh, it's called like registering a performance. You just list the performance, um, you add some information like what, uh, what the venue was, how much ticket sales were, an estimate of like how many um, people were there. And that gives them some information on like what, uh, on on basically like how much how much like share do you have of the cultural space, and that's kind of how they decide royalties. Again, it's like pretty complicated, but um, how would this work if I am asked to play online? So online royalties are less generally than uh in person or radio because like if something gets broadcast over radio uh thousands of people can listen to it at the same time um if you put something on youtube and 10 people watch it like that's you get chart like you get royalties based off of that so like um but but basically like if you perform it and you uh your name is there and you have like so it Again, like, I'm not 100% sure you'd have to, and this is always changing, too. Again, like, live streaming, when I first started my SoCan account, wasn't really a thing. They have fought for higher amounts to be paid. Um, but as far as, like, the whole live streaming thing, that's pretty new, and I really don't know how much that, uh, how much that would affect it it's it still is based off of like how many views you have what market share do you have so if you are I, I believe that for online performances they will not pay out a royalty until it reaches 500 plays so if you are doing a live performance and 500 people are watching online all at once that would you know, you get a royalty for that right away. If you put something on YouTube and it takes a year to get 500 views, you will still get paid at the end of that. But it's like, if it only gets 100 views, you know, I don't think that they'll pay out for that. Again, like, you can ask them questions, too. I really don't know that much. This was just, again, like a little favor to my students here. Okay, you guys, so I think that's about all I can answer for you today. Um, I hope that that was helpful for you. And again, um, you can hit me up on my website there uh, or, you know, you can comment below here or upload this to YouTube and you can ask me questions there. Again, if you have something that's like more specific or more um, just like more complicated than what I've shared, please contact SoCan yourself or do a little bit of deeper research online or talk to your label or, you know, there's lots of people that are a little bit better at this than me, but I know that and I know enough just to like get you started basically. Um, yeah, you're so welcome. Thanks guys. Bye.